Hi, my name is Josephine and these are my creatures. Hi, welcome back to my channel. It has been way too long since I posted a video in my Celestial Goddess series. But today I will be sharing with you the creation of Mars. So let's go. I chose to work with Gigi Grant's body and a Spectra head and create a hybrid. Gigi's body is one of my personal favorites because of the amazing sculpting and Spectra has a very intense face mold that I thought would create the needed intensity in my character. It's off with Spectra's hair and face paint after the prep phase, I can reroute the doll. I chose this metallic finish nylon from the Doll Hair Emporium in the color Black Lightning. She will have her hair up maybe in a ponytail or some sort, so I only rerouted her hairline and left the middle bald to reduce bulk. I secured the hair loops from the inside with glue. To prep the body, I give it a light sand. The sanding will also remove the painted details. Unlike on her face, you can't use acetone on the body because it will melt. I mix a nice terracotta color for her body. It's an iconic color caused by the iron oxide dust in the Martian atmosphere and covering the planet's surface. I had my lovely friend Lotta stay with me while I was working on this doll. So we decided to craft together. It was super nice. Can you believe this is her first custom doll? After Lotta left to go home, I continued with the body's paint job. I was looking up information about Mars to inspire me while I was working on the doll and I learned that Mars used to have oceans like we do. But nowadays, almost all the water on Mars is laying underneath the surface frozen. I wanted to include this frozen ice element slash water on Mars somehow in my doll. So I went digging in my jewelry stash and found this beautiful blue glass bead. I wanted the doll to be a bit androgynous anyway, so I made room on her chest for the bead to nestle in. For maximum sparkliness, I lined the cavity with tinfoil. Before fixing the bead that I accidentally broke while trying to clean it, in place with a drop of UV nail polish. To really make the bead look like water, I covered it with nail polish. This gave a super high shine finish to it that I really like. I finished the paint job on the torso and highlighted some of the details in her sculpt with black paint. I wanted the sculpting to look like skin tight armor. To give her an ethereal goddess-like touch, I added a layer of watered down color shifting paint from the brand Folk Art. To create armor-like finish, I add a layer of gloss varnish. Let's work on her face next. I start with covering her hair with a cloth and spraying the first layer of Mr. Super Clear Sealant. I do this outside while wearing a respirator mask. I have not yet repainted a Spectra doll and she has a very unique face mold with a relaxed expression and very high cheekbones. The second thing is, she is paper white. I definitely went into dark and saturated at first, so I had to take that off and try again with a really soft color. The planet is named after the Roman god of war because its reddish color was reminiscent of blood. So a fierce warrior goddess character is a must in my opinion. And what is more fierce than a bold makeup look? A bold and pouty mouth is a must in my opinion. And Hexion inspired eyebrows. I definitely took some inspiration from Hexion while repainting this doll because I do like his style and it's fun to experiment and borrow elements here and there. 
a makeup look inspired by Hexgen can't exist without a bold black eyeliner. I have to layer the colors to get the opacity and richness that I want, particularly when it comes to her blue eyes. This character definitely has some Asian influences, but I wanted to do blue eyes because that's her accent color, and I didn't do blue eyes for my Earth doll, and I slightly regret that. I keep building up the colors all around her face and spraying a new layer of sealant every time I feel like the color is not building up anymore or I want to save my work. I added small details all around her face like her bottom lashes, a little hint of under eye darkness and blue pastel near her temples and eyebrows. A tap of blue pastel on top of her pupils gives them a softer, more ethereal look. I did contemplate only doing bottom lashes, but ended up doing the top lashes too, and I think I was a bit heavy-handed with them. They did end up pretty bold and heavy, I do have to admit. Most of the other dolls in this series have the mark of the planet they represent on their face somewhere. I didn't want to do the mark on the forehead because I had already done that on several of the dolls, so I put it on her cheek instead. I think looking back I prefer the doll without it. There needs to be some continuity amongst all the dolls to make the group look good together. I added two dots to represent the two moons of Mars and decorative line to the other side to balance things out. I seal the face a last time and then tackle her hair. Like most of my dolls, I have a general concept in mind of what I want a doll to feel in the end, but I never designed them head to toe in advance. So I knew I wanted to do a ponytail or some sort of pulled back hairstyle. I looked up some Chinese and Japanese hairstyles to inspire me. She is a warrior goddess, so some Viking inspiration might have also slipped in there with the usage of all the braids. And the slight mohawk shape as well is very warrior-esque to me. To keep the hair in place, I use silver jump rings and needle and thread. To make her Japanese-inspired elaborate hair ornaments or kanzashi, I use wooden beads, silver chain, beads and two pins. These get stacked together and then pushed into her head. I wanted to style her hair before adding gloss to make sure I did not smudge anything. When I think of a warrior, one thing comes to my mind and that is a ninja or a samurai. I want all the dolls in this series to have characteristics from different cultures, and even a mix of them in some cases. So to me, the ultimate warrior was a mix of ninja and Roman soldier, inspired by the Roman god Mars. And maybe a pinch of a viking here and there. I try to incorporate both inspirations and have the end result be something unique and distinctly its own aesthetic with a fantasy feel. So I designed these dropped ninja pants with cutouts at the hips to show off the body armor underneath. I added ribbon straps at the waist to keep the pants up and a faux leather strap to catch the doll's crotch and prevent the pants to ride up on her. An elastic at the hem will keep the pant legs gathered and puffed. I needed to design a top that would allow the gem on her chest to show, and I wanted to reference my Venus doll, which will be revealed at the end of this video. So keep on watching. Because Mars and Venus are often seen as a couple, one represents femininity and one masculinity, 
so I think they would make a really nice duo inside my series. I cut out the top from pleather fabric and to hide my mistake, I added a design border around the edges because I was too lazy to recut it. I guess it's a happy accident. Because I hate bulky closures, the top will have a lace-up detail at the side and a small button closure made from a bead and some thin elastic thread. I like this fabric, but it's too close to her skin tone. So I tried dyeing it with yellow to change the hue ever so slightly. The fabric did not take the dye because it's not synthetic, unlike this chiffon that I was able to dye. So I will try again using dye meant for cotton and natural fibers. The color difference is very subtle, but it does make a difference. For the Roman soldier inspiration, I decided to give her a short cape. Capes are nice and dramatic, so perfect for our goddess doll. I cut out the cape pieces out of my custom dyed fabric and proceed with piecing the cape together. Because I'm extra and I wanted the doll to match with Venus, I used the same technique of adding volume with gores. One thing I didn't have to worry about while making the Venus dress was the underside. But on my cape, you can see it and it's quite unsightly. So I added a lining to the bottom to cover all the seam allowances. To close the cape, I added a snap button. Even though I think they are bulky, but the cape will hide that, so I'm okay with it. A warrior needs some weapons. And I think we have enough of that ninja inspiration already in her hairstyle, face and pants. So, for weapons, I will make her a Roman-style round shield out of an old earring. I always keep an eye out on clearance jewellery, or I will thrift jewellery as well to add to my hoard of craft supplies. I also like that there is a tiny hint to Vikings in the motif on this earring that I emphasize with dry brushing. I feel like she needs more texture and armor on her to feel like a true warrior goddess. So I add strips of cotton fabric to her arms and legs. For shoes, I was a bit stunted, but after digging in my stash for a while, I decided to go with Gigi's original shoes. I just simplified them a bit and gave them a new paint job using red, black, white, and gunpowder grey paint. To layer even more armor on her, I cut out suitable pieces out of craft foam and detailed them a bit using a ballpoint pen. The paint job was simple, just black and a bit of that gunpowder grey paint to the edges. Using UV nail polish in crafting is so easy, because you can cure it instantly under the UV lamp. I glue on all the armor pieces and then attached her head. The doll is almost complete. I just need to make a Roman inspired spear for her using a painted barbecue stick, more craft foam for the blade, a strip of pleather and other bits and bobs. And with that, she is done. I really like my Mars doll. I think her outfit came out really well and I'm so proud of her. I'm really glad I was able to mix all of my different inspirations together and create this fantasy-like doll. I really want this series to be really inclusive and use different cultures as my inspiration. We already have quite a lot of black characters in the series, so I'm really excited that I got to 
add an Asian character as well with a mix of a little bit of Viking and Roman soldier thrown in there somewhere. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the footage left on making my Venus doll. If you want to know what happened, I recommend watching last year's Halloween video. I will link it somewhere up in the cards or down below. I can't get into it in this video, it's so enraging, but without further ado, here is Venus and Mars together. I was so proud of my Venus doll when I finished her. I particularly like her dress. I really like the design and the fact that I was able to use a new technique of adding the gores to get the dress to look like a flower. I really like the overdress and the fact that I was able to use that idea again on my Mars doll, but just slightly different. I really love her sunset makeup and I also and I also decided to use as a base doll Operetta and Operetta has like a scar on her face and I think that was really interesting to incorporate into a doll that is supposed to represent Venus which is the goddess of beauty and flowers and all things feminine. I think it's really important that we celebrate people that are not necessarily that stereotypical beauty standard beautiful. You know what I mean? That's why I really love this series because I really want it to be inclusive and have a lot of variety in it. I was a bit selfish while making the Venus doll and I did give her like a strawberry blonde hair because that is my favorite hair color of all time. Yes, this is my hair, but I do dye it. I'm not a natural redhead, so I'm a bit biased when I chose to give her redhead because in my opinion, that is the most prettiest hair color you could ever have. And I'm so jealous. That's why I, I dye my hair, okay? I think Venus and Mars look so cute together. I think in my kind of head canon is that they are kind of like a couple or like a duo, they kind of go together. They are same as my sun and moon goddess dolls. Those videos are already up, so if you wanna see those, uh, they are kind of a couple as well. So we have quite a bit of girl couples going on, but I will make a boy doll somewhere on this series. The next doll in the series is going to be Jupiter, because we are doing the dolls in the correct order radiating out from the sun. So we've already done Mercury, Venus, Earth, now we've done Mars. So Jupiter is next. Uh, that doll is already finished. I'm hoping to squeeze it out before the end of the year, but I'm not making any promises. I only have to write the script, do the final edit, take final pictures. So I, I'm kind of optimistic to push it out somewhere quite quickly, maybe in a few weeks. So subscribe so you don't miss it. And I wanna know which one of the remaining planets are you most excited for? We haven't done Saturn, Pluto, Uranus or Neptune. We haven't done those ones yet. And if you have some ideas for those remaining dolls, put those as well down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, bye. I cut out the